So I want to try something for a bit of fun today. Uh, I want to show you a rock drum track that I recorded and mixed recently. Uh, it was for my cover Breakout by Foo Fighters. And yeah, it was a couple of things happened in the process that resulted in what I think is quite a nice kind of uh, alternative rock grunge kind of drum sound. All natural, no samples, um, and very little gating. The only gating I done was on the, the kick. Yeah, so let's take a look. So, uh, yeah, let's play the drums on their own. Yeah, so yeah, a fat, big, punchy rock drum sound. I was really happy with how it came out. And a couple of things I got lucky with. So uh, the real mic, if I pull it up here. really happy with how the rim sound came out so it was a uh, it's a budget ribbon mic it's a mxl r144 which is a great mic actually and i shoved it kind of in the corner of the room to get a lot of reflection to the sound that's what makes it sound you know pretty pretty big uh it's quite it's not really a massive room it's pretty standard enough room but uh the room sound is really big so Let's have a look without the plugins though real quick. Turn this up because a lot of compression on it so. Great thing about ribbon mics is um, the cymbals don't get overpowering like a condenser mic or even a dynamic mic so you can use them as a room mic and yeah, the kick and snare uh, tends to be emphasized more than say, if it's a condenser, you know, the cymbals might just uh, take over. But it's also really important and most important how the drummer plays. So uh, I'm coming at this from more of a drummer standpoint. So a lot of the things I do to get my sounds is more in kind of tuning and playing than engineering you know i'm a uh, much more experienced in the drum side of things than engineering so this is actually another reason i want to make this video this is all stock logic plugins uh so yeah it could be interesting for anyone out there that thinks oh, okay i need to buy a lot of plugins you don't just need to record fat sounds okay so let's have a listen again so i just compressed the it's not out of it. This is a, a cool uh, preset in Logic. It's called uh, Type R Pumping. It's a really over the top kind of compression. And I like to just sift through, you know, uh, the different uh, types. So like Studio, VCA, all these different ones to find the tone I'm after. They have all a different kind of color to them. And I actually always just kind of play with the presets. So when this preset is pretty crazy, but I kind of tweak it to my liking. So yeah, I think we're getting a nice sound there. So that's no EQ or anything. It's just compression. And yeah, you get a big sound. So if I play the drum sound actually, without the room mic. So it's not entirely relying on the, the room mic. There is a lot of punch and size already there, but the room mic, I think, gives it 
that kind of grunge rock sound, doesn't it? Uh, it just, yeah, it gives it really an exciting, explosive sound to it. Okay, so yeah, I'll throw on, and then I did a bit of EQing. So I just took out a few problem area frequencies. I'll let you have a listen to that. I put a bit of reverb as well. Yeah, so the room sound was uh, really exciting for me in this track. So let's have a listen to the snare. So the snare tone I was really happy with because normally uh, I would dampen the snare uh, when I'm recording, but uh, for this I left it wide open and I actually love the tone I got because it really spilled into the, the room mic nicely and created a, a really fat snare tone. So a tip for heavy rock drums I've, I've kind of noticed is, and this is obviously depending on what sound you want, if you want a really dry sound, this isn't gonna work, but if you want a, a really big sound, if you dampen the snare, and you've got a drummer that's absolutely hammering that snare, it's gonna end up just being stick attack. There's gonna be no decay to the drum uh, because yeah, you just hear that attack. It's so overpowering. So yeah, I think having the wires a little looser and also letting the drum kind of breathe a bit, it results in a bigger sound for rock drums. <laughs> Cause the, now the sound isn't just ta, Da, it's da, da, da. Does that make sense? Kind of gives it a bit more size, which I really like. Uh, so, what have I got on the snare? I um, sent it to a reverb. Reverb isn't doing that much, it's just giving it, you know, uh, a nice space in the mix. And I uh, have a compressor. Let's have a listen. So again, I was trying to emphasize that. I actually wanted the decay and the ring of the drum. So if I played it without the compression. Again, this is all personal preference, but uh, I was actually trying to bring out some of that sustain. But you see there, actually, even as I said, the drum was tuned pretty wide open, but if I turn off that compression and all the, the mics are in, the ring is pretty much gone because I'm hitting it so hard. Don't wanna play too much of the track, uh, copyright and all that. So yeah, I was playing to a drumless breakout though. That's all you're getting. Listen to my cover if you want to hear the sound. I'll uh, link it below and I'll put it at the end of this video. Okay, so let's have a look at some of the other sounds. Um, I put that compressor back on, so let's look at the overheads. Space pair panned out really wide. Um, I flipped the phase on both of these because they made the snare sound a bit bigger. Uh, but other than that, I just did a bit of EQing. That's only for the left, but I kind of copied it on the right as well. So I'll, actually, I'll take out the EQ on both. Just 
killing some of that kind of whistly horribleness but also adding a bit of top end because uh, I still want a bit of shimmeriness bit of sizzle all right what else we got that's of interest so here's actually a little thing I like to do with heavy rock drums so instead of gating the toms what I like to do is just hit the tom really hard and then uh, I'm kind of getting the level between spill and you know actual drum I'm kind of controlling it so I'll show you what I mean so here are my tom channels floor and rack So there is spill there, of course, but I think it's uh, it's definitely fine to work with. So what I normally do is I don't compress toms. I kind of leave them as is, not to bring up more of the spill instead of gating them. Now, depending on what kind of project I'm working on, I will gate them or chop out stuff. With this, I'm letting everything spill. I want a big sound, so this actually worked well. So if I actually play, I'll show you what I mean. I'll play the full mix. So that's me playing super hard and you heard me mute the toms on and off so that's the rack tom and this is the floor tom and yeah it's so low that you're not really hearing it so i'm relying on hard hitting to give me the level i'm looking for with the toms so that i don't have to crank them in the mix and bring up the the bleed <laughs> And also you hear there, the room mic is giving me really nice uh, sound to the toms. Also got some nice attack from the overheads. So really I'm just using the, the close mics to give me that low end with the toms. bit more presence okay what else we got here this is the only track I gated which was the kick I wanted to compress it get it sound really smacky so it's the kick Not much EQing, uh, just a bit of bump in the 2K region. Um, here's my gate and my compressor, which is a, another preset that I just tweaked to my liking. Okay, so let's have a listen. One more interesting thing I want to show you is the worst mic. So for anyone that doesn't know, this is that kind of mic you put in the middle of the kit. What I love about this mic is it gives you this punchy mid-range. So you get this really punchy kind of uh, hole kind of sound of the kit. And the, the cymbals don't get too overpowering because the, the mic is close to the kick and snare. So what have I done with this? All I've done is compressed it. I didn't even EQ it. I would normally EQ it, but for I obviously was happy enough with this. Again, just press the compress the snot out of it. So I'm using the VCA smashed preset in Logic, which I love. This is just a, a quick way to completely smash up a sound and get it really compressed and yeah I just dialed in to what worked for me and you see there I'm using the, the studio FET so this is something I love to play around with Logic is
you'll get different uh, kind of coloration and different sounds from using those and I, I usually just pick whatever one I want. Some are tighter sounding, some are, have a bit more, I don't know, fatness and kind of bloom to the sound. So that's what I want with that. So let's have a listen. You hear it's just kind of focusing the kick and the snare a touch and kind of giving it a tiny bit of punch. I, I haven't really put it that loud in the mix, but it does add a, add a little bit. And I'd, I'd sometimes really use that sound, but for this, I was kind of, I was, I was more digging the room mic. So. It's subtle, but I, I think it kind of adds a little bit of definition and punch there. Even uh, I, it really helps out the, the kick sometimes I find. So I'm using an Audix D6, which is an amazing mic. It, you just put on a kick drum and it instantly sounds good. But the problem with it is a lot of people say, and it's true, there's a, a big mid-range cut, which uh, from kind of a lot of kick drum sounds just instantly sounds good, but it can... Uh, I don't know, sometimes sound almost a little soft. So that kind of gives it a bit more presence, the worst, you know? So I was really happy with that. And what have I done here? Uh, the stereo out is kind of uh, a bit crazy. I've kind of just added some compression and uh, the a multi presser. This is a this multi band compressor in Logic is cool. Again, I play with the presets and kind of tweak it. So gives it a bit more clarity. Stuff like that. Uh, what else I got? Oh, I actually uh, lifted some of the top end. Let's hear that. So that's about it. If you want to hear the full thing, have a listen to my cover on my channel of Breakout Foo Fighters. So yeah, this is a kind of drummer's perspective on audio engineering. So I'm sure I did things that make it cringe, but hopefully I did some things that also you thought sounded cool. Again, a lot of this was getting the tones then and there. So if I take off uh, the plugins, this could sound terrible now, actually. Let's see that. What am I doing here? And I'll take it off. It's going to be really quiet, actually, so I'm going to... So that was everything raw. So the starting sound was definitely there. Uh, things lined up for me. The snare tone was where I wanted it. The tuning was was right for the track. It sounded big. Uh, the room mic position worked well. Sometimes things line up in recording and other times they don't. So I just wanted to share this drum sound because I, um, I really liked the way it came out. And yeah. If anyone enjoyed this let me know if you didn't uh let me know also say uh don't stop showing uh sound stuff because you're a drummer and stick to the drums okay thanks everyone Oops.